in the 1977 World Series between the Dodgers and the Yankees with the Yankees leading three games to two. Yankee Stadium in New York City. And to throw out the ceremonial first pitch, the roar for the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. of today still in awe of the Clipper Keith as a player and as a man and this ABC sports exclusive is brought to you by Gillette makers of good thick rich foamy shave cream by Chevrolet see what's new today at your Chevrolet dealer and by General Motors parts division The umpires for tonight's game, John McSherry of the National League, back at the plate, he lived right here in the Bronx. Nestor Shylock of the American League first base, Ed Sudol, National League second base, Larry McCoy, American League third base, left field line, Jerry Dale, National League, right field line, Jim Evans, American League. Dimensions of the ballpark, left field foul pole, 312, left center, 430. Center field, 417, right center, 385, right field foul pole, the short porch, 310. The Dodger lineup this way. Davey Lopes will be leading off for the Dodgers, playing second, of course. Batting second, the man who found himself in the most recent World Series game, Bill Russell, started a hit. Batting third, the ever dangerous Reggie Smith, fleet footed slugger. Ron Say, of course, the consistent home run hitter. He's 3 for 18 on the series. This fellow you got to watch. Seven out of 20 on the series, Steve Garvin. And after him, Dusty Ladies Baker, the power man, too, with six out of 20 on the series. And then Rick Munda, who's only one of eight on the series. And after him, the young man talked about in the pregame show, Steve Yeager, hero in the most recent World Series game, Bert Hoop, the knuckleball curva who stopped the Yankees dead here at Yankee Stadium in game number two. Setting the Yankee defense, Lou Pinello, who's had a very fine series, both offensively and defensively. In center field, it is the speedster, Mickey Rivers, a very important figure in tonight's game for the Yankees. In right field, two home runs now in the World Series of 77, Reggie Jackson. The inner defense is the same as we've seen it. Steady Greg Nettles is over at third base. Feeling fine now. No ache in his shoulder at shortstop. It is Bucky Dent. The infield here at Yankee Stadium, you got to know it to play it well, he does. At second base, outstanding young ball player, Willie Randolph. Steady as they come. At first base, Chris Shambliss, whose bat has been rather quiet through the series, but look out any time. And back of the plate tonight, doing the catching, the captain of the Yankees, Thurman Munson. And on the mound, the big right-hander, Mike Torres. He won the ball game, game three, by a score of 5-3. He allowed uh, only seven hits. He struck out season high of nine. It was only in the third inning of the ball game that he got in trouble when Smith singled, Garvey singled, and then with a two-out home run by Dusty Baker. That was really the only mistake he made in that ball game. The nine strikeouts, as I said, high for the year. He was consistently over 90 miles an hour with his fastball in winning game number three. And Billy Martin there is confident he's the man to have on the mound tonight. Tommy Lasorda, pensive, but in his own way confident. He saw his team win when it had to on Sunday. He's confident they can win when they have to tonight. Now, as Davy Lopes walks to the plate, once again, Tom Seaver. Well, I think as I was saying in the pregame show, Keith, that what the Dodgers established is they did have momentum, and they established it by being able to go to the opposite field. The Dodgers, prior to this, have been up there trying to hit the ball. A hitter uh, try to pull the ball. A hitter is much easier to pitch to if he tries to pull the ball. And especially here in Yankee Stadium, great big Yankee Stadium, if the Dodgers try and pull the ball, I think, tonight, they might well be back on the plane heading for L.A. before midnight. Davey Lopes takes the first pitch from Big Mike Torres, who signed for 20,000 bucks out of Topeka, Kansas. Ball one high and inside, and Lopes 
goes for a pitch number two doesn't get it and it's one and one Davy three for 20 with one home run and Torres starts out the game at 91 miles an hour on the jugs gun that's beat on the ground right to the shortstop Bucky Dent without number one this Yankee crowd will be roaring all night long with every single out well they know they can win it right here they get a world championship with one more game Bill Russell the Dodger shortstop Reggie Smith on deck Russell now four for 23 with two runs batted in and a curveball bites the corner strike one hit toward Willie Randolph the second baseman two out Tom, do you prefer four working every fourth day or every fifth day? I work every uh, fifth day. I work with four days rest. Because Mike prefers working in rotation, and he doesn't mind working on three days rest. He's a little bit different pitcher than I am. He's a sinker ball pitcher where I'm a riding fastball pitcher. Reggie Smith swings and misses on a high fastball, a two-run home run in game number two, a two-run home run in game number five for Reggie Smith. He has a total of four runs batted in, five for 18. Hits it toward the left side. Big bounce, Dent knocks it down, he'll have no play. Waiting on the official scorers to call it. Looked like if he'd handled it cleanly, he would have had a play. They call it error on the shortstop they don't want Reggie they want to keep Reggie off the bases because he's so much more effective as a left hand batter than a right hand batter and Tar has pitched him well but he should have had the play Ron say now cleanup hitter is at the plate with two out Reggie Smith on first and Steve Garvey on deck and the pitch is outside for ball one Preston Gomez coaches at third for the Dodgers Jim Gilliam at first Red Adams is the pitching coach. Swing, it is foul. No, I don't know if it was fouled or not. Reggie Smith canters on down to second, so apparently it was not fouled away. I heard a big clunk. I guess it came off Thurman Munson's chest protector or mask. Two Yankee defensive mistakes in the first inning. They had not made an error in the entire series until Sunday's game when they made two costly ones, one by Pinella, one by Nettles. That led to the Yankees zooming to a five to nothing lead instead of perhaps a two, uh, the Dodgers zooming to a five to nothing instead of perhaps a two to nothing lead. Pass ball charged to Thurman Munson. Error on the shortstop, pass ball. Say looks, it is low. Ball two, two and one now with Smith at second base. We have come from summer weather to winter, or almost to winter weather, certainly autumnal, where the temperature going into the 40s tonight. Say looks, it is low. Three and one. Incidentally, the Dodgers with eight home runs, just one short of the team record of nine, set back in 1955 when Duke Snyder hit four. Low ball four. Two Dodgers aboard. Now, Steve Garvey. In my opinion, Tom Seaver, key man in a pressure ball game like this because he does have the patience to ride the ball normally where it's pitched. Well, he was a much different hitter in Los Angeles on Sunday. I really do think that part of the Dodgers' problem when they first came in here, they tried to hit the ball out of the ballpark. I was down talking to them before the game, and they kind of talked among themselves. It wasn't a clubhouse meeting, but Garvey clearly established that he would go to right field Sunday in Dodger Stadium. Low, ball one. Which I might add is a jet propulsion center in the daytime. Hit the ball, and it carries. Gary's Gary's Popeye can hit it out anywhere though with those massive forearms as Smith leads it second and say leads it first and the pitch to Garvey low ball two two balls and no strikes Dusty Baker is on deck Taras is in trouble not really of his own making error by Dent opened the door the pass ball by Munson added to it and then Taras himself did add to it with the base on balls to say Ball is hit down the right field line. It'll go to the corner. Here comes Reggie Smith around second base. He'll score. Ron Say is turning third. He's coming to the plate. Here's the Vino relay as Steve Garvey goes all the way to third base, and the Dodgers lead two to nothing. 
Well, that's just what Tom Seaver said. Going to right field. And the Yankees continue to pitch him outside when the buck of most scouts is, especially in a ballpark like this, as we look at it again. Steve hitting it to the right side. The book is pitch Garvey in, in, in. On that pitch, you could, there's this, you see Smith scoring that ball and then Reggie getting it down in the right field corner. Ron Say, of course, scored on the triple as well. That ball, Steve, went right with the pitch. You saw Thurman set up outside and he went right with it. That's the pitch that those hitters, the Dodger hitters, were trying to pull before. And if you try and pull that pitch, it's a long fly ball to center field or left center field. Dusty Baker up there, 6 for 20 in the series. He has one homer. He has five runs batted in. And Mike Torres now down in the ball game, 2 to nothing. Has a man at third in Garvey, and he is now at 2 and 0, oh, and consistently has been low and away. Again, he is low and away. Go back to that point I made as you see Billy Martin that the last time we had a six game World Series was 1959 when the Dodgers beat the White Sox. It's a long time ago. There's one. It's three and one now to Dusty Baker with Rick Mundy on deck. He was three and one to say and now he's three and one here to Baker and you'll watch Dusty really spin if he gets his pitch. Fouls it off and it's full at three and two. That pitch is outside and he tried to pull the ball. Now that's exactly what the Dodgers can't do. That pitch has got to be hit the right center. If he hits that ball well and does pull it, there's no way that he can pull it out of the ballpark. Torres made a good pitch on the outside part of the plate. He's got to go with that pitch. Dick Tidrow is in the Yankee bullpen. There he is. Bullpens are covered because people were throwing things down in there the other night. They put a cover on it. Called him out on a fastball thrown through at the letter. But the Dodgers use an error, a fastball, a walk, and a triple by Steve Garvey as you see Baker go down swinging. And they jump out to a 2 to nothing lead. They got the two runs on one hit. 2 nothing Dodgers, the Yankees coming up. Here's the Yankees starting lineup. Mickey Rivers, center field. He's 4 for 23 in the series. Steady going, Willie Randolph is 4 for 21. Thurman Munson comes into the series like Garvey with seven hits out of 21 turns at bat. Reggie Jackson having a good series, six of 17. Chris Chambliss, well, he hasn't had that good a series, but still he's five for 20. And Greg Nettles, four for 17. He's been struggling. Lou Pinella has been a consistent hitter, six of 19. And Bucky Den has surprised at the plate, really, with five for 17. Pitcher, of course, is Mike Torres hurt by the error and the fastball in the first inning that led to two Dodger runs. Keep the defense. Both runs unearned. In left field for Los Angeles, Dusty Baker. He's had the only Dodger error. In center field tonight with a right-hander pitching, it is Rick Monday hitting from the left side. In right field, Reggie Smith with a right-hander pitching. He also goes from the power side, his power side, the left. The inner defense, the Penguin Ron Say is at third base. At sack shortstop, it'll be Bill Russell. And over at second base, the whippet for the Dodgers, the man they need on base, Davey Lopes, the top of the order, and the man who delivered the triple a moment ago for the two unearned runs, Steve Garvey. Back of the plate, big three-run homer for him on Sunday, Steve Yeager. And on the mound, Bert Hooten won the game 6-1 to one here at New York, game number two. The only real pressure he had put on him was Randolph single, Munson single, Jackson with a double play to get in the New York run in the fourth and fifth innings, only time the Yankees were able to put any pressure on him in game number two. Now the top of the order for the Yankees. Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, and Thurman Munson in game number three in Los Angeles was Mickey Rivers' most productive outing. Hits the ball high in the air to the left side, and it's drifting toward the crowd, but Baker goes right to the line, tumbles into the crowd, and makes the catch. Great catch. The Dodgers with that two runs in the bank, obvious, alive, obviously alive and well, up for the occasion. Watch Baker now as he goes right to the wall. The fence is low there. It is also padded. He can afford to bump it, reaches, and then goes almost into somebody's lap. <laughs> He'll take it. One out. And the pitch to Randolph from Bert Hooten. 
is low ball one. Low ball two. I would imagine it was comforting for Burt to note the rotation of the umpires in the series to see that the National League ump would be back at the plate tonight. It's amazing. John McSherry is probably one of the few umpires in the National League that you might consider even to be a high ball umpire. He's a big man. He must weigh about 260 pounds. He's probably 6'6", and he'll call more high strikes than almost any other National League umpire. Three and one, the count now on Willie Randolph with Thurman Munson in the on-deck circle. Two-nothing Dodgers on two unearned runs. Russell flags it down. Ball was struck sharply and throws out Randolph. I noticed last week when the Dodgers were here in the second game that Bill Russell was out there for 20 minutes early with Jim Gillian just hitting one ground ball after another, working that entire shortstop area because it's a little bit different here. Ball tends to carom or bounce to the right every time because it, it slants that way. Slants down. Bucky Dent spent almost a half hour explaining the infield lie to Keith the other day when we were here to start the series. Thurman Munson. Low ball one. Munson has hit safely in nine straight games in the World Series, including the last year. He has been brilliant in handling the New York pitching. A roller toward the shortstop, Russell. Russell almost pulled it down the line and pulled Garvey off the bag, but Steve able to handle it. We played one inning. The Dodgers lead the Yankees two to nothing. The Dodgers jump on top, two to nothing. As we go now to the top of the second inning, this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball prohibited. The bottom third of the order now for Los Angeles, Rick Monday, center fielder, Steve Yeager, the catcher, and then Bert Hutton, the pitcher, the designated hitter, not being used this year in the World Series. Rick Mundy, one for eight in the World Series. On the ground, the Shambles at first base. Waves Torres away and makes the play himself. One gone. Conversation about Torres and rest between starts. Three days, won five and lost three. You can see better at three days between pitching than any other way. We had a Monday night game in Baltimore. You may remember, Keith, the Yankees against the Birds. We were with Mike that day. He was due to pitch that night. He made that very point. Fouled off by Steve Yeager, six for 16, two home runs and five runs batted in, and the commissioner with the eternal phone in his hand. Not only that, wearing a sweater, not a top coat, and he's properly got. There's Bert Hooten. In on the deck. Effect, sir. The count, one strike to Steve Yeager with one out and nobody on. And the Dodgers on top, two to nothing. That pitch is low. You know, the thing, uh, Keith, about so many days rest, three days rest, or four days rest, you get down and you talk to a pitching coach, you talk to a Red Adams about his pitchers. Ball is foul. And it gets so fine to the point where he'll say, well, he's pitching with three days rest, which means that he's pitching on the fourth day. But he's going from a day game to a night game, which means four or five extra hours of rest. Or he's going from a night game to a day game. And all those things, you know, go into the makeup of a pitching coach, helping the manager decide who's going to be the best pitcher on a certain day. Should you pitch him on a Wednesday or pay wait? Because we're playing a day game and pitch him on Thursday. All those things, that's what a that's one of the things that a pitching coach does in helping a manager. One ball and two strikes now to Steve Yeager with one out. Swing and a miss, and two out. The man who will get the call tomorrow night in game seven for Los Angeles, lefty Tommy John. I might add that Tom Seaver is stunning pitching all over again. They've reissued Christy Mathewson's 1912 book, Pitching in a Pinch, and Tommy is playing, paying close attention to it. <laughs> Learning how to throw the fadeaway and the drop. The drop. 
<laughs> Still trying to learn the drop. <laughs> Bert Hooten, the pitcher, at the plate, hits the ball to right field, short right. Reggie Jackson comes in, makes the catch, and Mike Torres gets the Dodgers in order in the top of the second inning. So after an inning and a half, the score, Los Angeles 2, New York nothing. Bottom of the second inning for the Yankees. Middle of the order, Reggie Jackson, Chris Chambliss, Greg Nettles, three tough left-handed outs. The Mayor, Tom Bradley from Los Angeles. Here Abraham Breen, Beam of New York on the right. And Mayor Tom's all bundled up, didn't he? Not used to this 56 degree weather. 80 degrees on their way. <laughs> yeah. Don't blame him. What colors here, though? The leaves turning. Beauty of autumn, Tom Seaver, Southern California, now comfortably ensconced in a rebuilt barn in Connecticut, and loving every minute. Went for a nice long walk in the woods today with my two dogs. Can't get in the house, huh? <laughs> she kicked me out. I can't get back in. I don't have a key. <laughs> Reggie up now. The base, Bert Hooten. The pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. Three balls and no strikes. Mike Torres and Thurman Munson sitting side by side in the Yankee dugout. That last pitch was an interesting pitch. He got behind Reggie 2 0, still throwing the knuckle curveball. Ball four. In game number two, when Hooten beat the Yankees, Jackson struck out looking, hit into a double play, struck out swinging, hit a fly ball to center. Well, the Yankees have their own feelings about Hooten, having seen him once. Tom and I with the Yankee Super Scout, Bertie Tebbets, whose thesis is, you just go with the pitch. Don't try to overpower. Chris Chambliss. Low ball one. So Bert Hooten now has thrown five pitches in the inning. He has yet to put one in the strike zone. Dodgers lead two to nothing on a pair of unearned runs at the top of the first inning. There is one of those high strikes Tom Seaver talked about. Very good, Keith. Excellent. That strike, a lot of uh, umpires in the National League, you won't get that as a strike. It'll be too high. One and one to Chambliss. Jackson off first. Bluffs and doesn't go. Low and away, ball two. I made this point several times now during this World Series that a pitcher cannot get behind hitter. Got behind Reggie Jackson 3-0. He's behind 2-1 on one here. You cannot get behind good hitters and get away with it. Get deep to right center field. Way back. Goodbye. It. Forget it. Just as Tom Seaver made the point. Don't get behind. Well, I gotta, I'm sure we'll see that replay of him. I've got to make a point here. He was 3-0 through it. Pardon me, 2-0 to Reggie Jackson. He threw the knuckle curveball for ball three. He got behind Chris Chambliss here and came in with a fastball, a low fastball. You cannot pitch behind in the major leagues. I, I just can't say it enough because it's such a basic principle of pitching. You cannot give good hitters like Chris Chambliss or Jackson an upper hand. Another look as the ball sails into the seats off Chambliss' bat. Red Adams to the mound to talk with the pitcher. Bert Hooten and Elias Sosa is up in the bullpen. And Jackson look at Reggie's reaction, gone. Keith. Jubilation. He's got two fingers up. He says right. that's two runs right Over there. Side quickly. Nobody out. Bottom of the second. And the history of Bert Hooten has been. It's documented. That is, he does not often have consecutively good back-to-back -back performances. That's Sosa working in the Dodger bullpen. Tom Lasorda can't fiddle around. He can't wait for a pitcher to find his groove. 
Not down, three games to two in game number six. Now they've cleaned up some of the debris, the banners or whatever it was that came floating out onto the field, the streamers, and the pitch now to Greg Nettles is low, ball one. Remember in Philadelphia when Burt didn't get a couple of uh, calls right for him, he came unglued. Said it really it never did. Happen again. Sharp shot, Garvey Glove. Off the bat of Nettles, pulled it sharply, and makes the put out. That's the first out of the inning. That was against the Philadelphia pitcher Christensen, who was at the plate at the time. Putin thought he had him struck out. The umpire said no. Then he walked Christensen, and then the next three batters. Sauter had no recourse but to take him out. Red Adams there in the dugout, the pitching coach, talking with the manager, Tom Lasorda. The batter is Lou Vanella, up for the first time. Vanella, 6 for 19, with two runs batted in. He swings and fouls it away. He had a single in three trips against Bert Hooten in game number two. High fly ball. Reggie Smith, right fielder. Makes the catch in short, right center. Two out. Number 20, Bucky Dent. Yankee shortstop, Bucky Dent now at the plate. A 2 2 ball game. Chambliss, long home run at 385. And then some with Jackson aboard. Dent had a single in three trips against Putin. First time he looked at it. That pitch thrown to the hands, out of the strike zone. Bucky took the cut, didn't get it. It's the best uh, knuckle curveball he's had all night. That one really dropped off the table. There's another one, same thing. Ground ball down to Davy Lowe. Inning is over for the Yankees, but it's a big inning for them. Denver, two run homer, and we're all even at two at the end of two. Well, you'll see this pitch by Bert Hooten. The pitch he's having trouble getting over so far in the ball game. This is the first pitch he made to Bucky Jeff, the knuckle curveball. Now watch the action on this. It's a dandy. Boom, just a total defensive swing that he had. That was the best knuckle curve that he's had since the game started. So Bert Hooten reflecting in the Los Angeles dugout, sitting alongside Rick Mundy as the top of the Dodger order will come to the plate now in the top of the third inning. Davey Lopes, Billy Russell, and Reggie Smith. You might say that the Yankees now have grabbed that momentum back to their side. L.A. has got an excellent chance to get it right back. They've got the top of their lineup coming up right here in the top of the third. Torres is low and away, ball one to Davey Lopes. He grounded with a shortstop, Bucky Dent, first time up. Fouls that pitch away for strike one, one and one. Lopes has stolen two bases in the series. It's a high pop out of play. New York has one stolen base, that from Mickey Rivers. Neither team has run that much. Opportunity has not been there, really. Funny thing about that, Martin has a reputation as a venturesome gambling manager, but his bosses call him a conservative manager, particularly Gabe Paul. Out of. And he is indeed just that. Might again make the point, too, that the New York Yankees are in the World Series and went through the playoffs with 24 players instead of the normal 25. That was because of the Carlos May trade to California in the 16th of September. They were not uh, allowed to replace him on the roster. Whitey Herzog said they could have May back. Big gap in right center field defensively for Lopes. He can punch it out there. He can run a while. Two and two, the count. Low and away. Three and two. You can be sure he doesn't want to lose Davey Lopes. And yet he's in danger of doing just that. Hits the ball. Flag by Torres. Oh, Mike throws it on a bounce to Chambliss. One out. The simplest kind of a little play, 
Got to be careful or it'll get away. Bill Russell. As you see that replay, now that, I think that really showed what I was talking about, a hitter's trying to pull the ball. Now that ball was on the outside part of the plate. Davey was trying to pull the ball. When you do those things, you hit a lot of pop flies, you hit a lot of weak ground balls. Bill Russell, career high during the regular season in batting at 278, rolls it to Bucky Dent, two down. Well, I'll tell you this, the Dodgers aren't looking long at Mike Torres, are they? The right fielder, Reggie Smith. How about that? That's a nifty amount. Also a record. Tom right. would take that to buy furniture for the barn. <laughs> Breaking pitch is inside and low to Reggie Smith. Got a board on Dent's error. Moved to second on Munson's pass ball. Scored. When Garvey triple. Swing and a miss. Now we talked about the importance of these two guys, the leadoff hitters, Lopes and Russell. Now, the reason being, obviously, you look at Reggie Smith up at the plate right now. He's up with nobody on base. High five. Good. Right center. Good. 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 Way out of here. Gone. Monster. Home run by Reggie Smith. And the Dodgers are back on top. Three to two. That's like the one in your last man. Back left-handed, ladies and gentlemen. Where he seems to be at least doubly more effective, though the batting averages don't show it. Batting left he has against batting right. Tremendous hitter from the left side. And he's becoming a tremendous force in this World Series. Had a big day Sunday. Peter O'Malley, son of Waller O'Malley, now running the ball club. Here is the pitch by Torres again. Right in his warehouse. I mean, that is right down the old poop chute. And goodbye. You, can't, you couldn't put it on a tee better than that for Reggie Smith. So the momentum that Tom's been talking about goes right back to the Dodgers. And the batter is Ron Say, the cleanup hitter. Strike on the outside corner. It was a high strike. Interesting stats. Five runs, only three base hits. Remember, the first two Dodger runs were unearned. Torres walked Say back in the first inning. Inside and high. The score is now 3-2 Los Angeles. Top of the third. There he is. Leads the series in home runs with three. Feeling pretty good. Ball to the hole. Black by Nettles. Oh. Can't pick it up. He almost had a play on that. Greg made a good stop. I don't think Dent would have been able to get say in the hole. Well, he's got some golden gloves in his closet or on his mantle. He just scrapped that ball. He knocks it down and turns around. It'll be right out in front of him. The first if he'd have picked it up on the first jab, like right there, he still might have a play, but he misses that one. Whoop. He, he would have had a play, I think, if he'd have been able to pick that one up. Base hit. Third of the game for the Dodgers. 3-2 Los Angeles on Reggie Smith's solo home run. Ron Say is on first. Steve Garvey, who tripled home two runs, his first time up. He's the guy who's piling up the hits. Leads all hitters with eight hits now in the series. Torres curves him outside. He said on Sunday that had not been a dominant hitter in the series in terms of number of base hits. Talked about Brock and Richardson with 13 apiece in 68 and 64. That home run, incidentally, by Reggie Smith ties the all-time Dodger record for the series. Said in 1955, the series in which Duke Snyder struck four. And they're talking now, obviously, to the bullpen as Yogi Berra hangs up. And we'll have some action back there with Garvey calling it away. There's the man with the pen, Dick Tidrow. Second time Dick has been up. He got up back in the first inning when Mike was in trouble. Two out here. Garvey hits it deep to center. Rivers backs up, may have some room. Does. At the track, makes the catch. So the Dodgers regain the lead in the top of the third, three to two on Reggie Smith's home run. From the helicopter, this picture of Yankee Stadium on this October 18, 1977. And the Dodgers lead the Yankees by a score of 3-2 in game number six, trying to take it through seven games. The Dodgers in the first inning, Smith reached for an error, Say walked, Garvey triple, Dodgers led it 2-0.
Yankees second, Jackson Walk, Chambliss, Homer, 2-2. Dodger third, Smith, home run, Dodgers, 3-2. And Mike Torres up for the first time at the plate. Swings and misses for strike one with Mickey Rivers on deck and Willie Randolph to follow. That was Hooten's fastest pitch, 92 miles per hour. Tom Seaver is consistently emphasized from the very first pitch. You can't get behind the headers. Through two innings, Hooten has not had a count of more than one strike on any header. That's the first time. Two strikes. And he does it against the opposing pitch. Natural. <laughs> no pity for us weak hitters. Struck him out. That's one. And now Burt will have to work his way through the... Man at the top of the Yankee batting order now, Mickey Rivers, and then Willie Randolph. Rivers fouled out to Dusty Baker, who tumbled into the seat to make the catch, lead the game. Leach it on the ground, foul. Keep talking about rain being in the offing, but so far we haven't seen any, thank goodness. Let's hope we don't. Might get some tomorrow, they say. Might have thunder showers tomorrow. Thunder showers? Too cold for thunder showers. Oh, stop, Keith. Just you know what that you're means, in the too. East. <laughs> nice autumn weather. That pitch is low. One and one to Mickey Rivers. One out and nobody on. Sure was pretty looking out the window today at Central Park with the leaves starting to turn. I'll admit it. Ball is fouled off to the left side. Out of play. I'll take two and mustard only, please. That's merciless. I haven't had a chance to eat. Pitch is high. <laughs> two and two. My dog never tasted anywhere like it does at a ballpark. You're brainwashed by it, I guess. It's fouled right back here. Oh. Two balls and two strikes. With one out and nobody aboard. That's toward Davy Lopes, the second baseman. Guns him to first. You've got two down. It was on a cold, windy, and wet day in Chicago at Wrigley Field in 1972 in April that Bert Hooten threw his no hitter against the Phillies. Well, that won't happen tonight. Cold weather doesn't bother him. Willie Randolph takes the ball inside. Ball two. That's been part of our first problem here tonight. He's the knuckle curveball has not been able to get it over for a strike, and that one was way high. There's one. Here's that high strike that's I was talking strike. about. That's right, from McSherry. John, well, McSherry, the umpire, will give you, you know, you still get the low pitch, but you'll get more high strikes from him than you will most other National League umpires. Burt might escape with his breaking pitch high, too, because he does throw it hard. High fly ball. Davey Lopes drifting back into short center. Rick Mundy coming in. Rick calls him off and makes the catch, and the Yankees are gone in order. In the bottom of the third inning. So we've traveled three innings of play in the score. The Dodgers three to the Yankees two. <laughs> the great sports artist, Leroy Neiman. He did that great mural of the Montreal Olympics. Many of you have probably seen it on television as we look at a call ball. On Dusty at Baker. End, at the end of the Olympics, he asked Frank Gifford to take a look at it, give an opinion. Gifford said, looks like a pizza. After Frank got up, what did he say? <laughs> Maybe Giff was hungry. <laughs> We're not doing a bet. You bet a job up here in the booth ourselves. Two balls and no strikes. Now it's 3-0. Oh. Dusty Baker, the man who did most of the damage in Los Angeles to Mike Torres in that 5-3 game as Dusty hit a three-run homer on the only mistake, really, that Torres made the whole game. It is now 3-1. and one. Get behind three and nothing to a hitter like Baker, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, the, the good chance to have the ball hit hard someplace. High drive to right center. Jackson going back. Going back. On the track, Reggie runs it down. 
So Baker gave it a ride to about 380 feet. Reggie Jackson made the catch on the track at 385. Only the dimensions of this ball ballpark defeated Baker on that one. Tidrow again in the pen for New York. Third time up. Rick Monday now at the plate. Do you think that last ball had been out Sunday afternoon in Dodger oh. Stadium? As I said, that that's ball a carries. jet propulsion. Ooh. Right. Monday pulled it sharply to Shambliss. His first time up tonight. 0 for 1. Inside, ball 1. 1 and 1. 1 out, nobody on. Dodgers lead 3-2. Dodgers still playing long ball for the Yankees, though. Home run and the triple, the big blows for their three runs. Watched over the shortstop's head into left field for a base hit by Rick Monday. Lou Pinella slides down but gets it in. That is the fourth hit of the ball game for the Dodgers. Pinella repairing the turf. Steve and Steve Yeager walks to the plate. See Lou sliding down. Put one out from under it. But he held Monday at first base. Now here is Yeager. Three run homer for him. This one is drilled down the line. It is a fair ball. It comes out toward the left fielder, Panella. Monday goes into second base. Yeager is out at second. Yeager trying to stretch. He is thrown out at second base. Well, that's very good aggressive pace running by Steve Yeager. It's a ball down in the corner, and Fidella made a fine play. The ball carried off the side wall, and he made a good throw to second base and just nipped it. But that's still good aggressive base running when you're up by one run. We said earlier in the series, Pinella can fool you. Billy Martin's at the mound now, conference with Torres and Munson, because obviously they're hitting Torres. Two hits in this inning, both good shots. But Pinella, who is not the fleetest man of foot, once he gets to the ball, he's solid. He will usually hold it despite the error on Sunday, and he will make an accurate throw, as he did there. What about that play he made on Saturday? Sensational of Ronnie Say, the play still of the series. Superb catch. Bert Hooten now with two out and a chance to help himself with Rick Mundy at third base. Dodgers lead 3-2. Hooten up at a fly ball caught by Reggie Jackson in short right. His first time up, ball one from Mike Torres. As a strike, it's one and one. Top of the order, Davy Lopes waiting on deck. Time called now by the umpire down the first baseline, Nestor Shylock. If the series goes seven games, Nestor will be back behind the plate tomorrow night. He's from the American League, and he is the senior umpire of this group. Torres delivers, and Hooten swings and misses. It's a count of one ball and two strikes. Pitchers will be tomorrow night, a pair of left-handers, Ron Guidry for the Yankees, and Tommy John for the Dodgers. Monday, big lead off third, Hooten fouls in the Munson Club for strike three. And so the Dodgers are turned away in the top of the fourth inning. And the score remains Los Angeles three, New York two. Preceding a message on behalf of Major League Baseball as we move now to the home half of the fourth inning and you look down on Yankee Stadium you can see the Dodgers have three runs on five hits but those two runs in the first inning were both unearned because of an error and a fastball and there is Miss Lillian Carter who has turned into a coast to coast jet setter here with the World Series and having the time of her life Tom Lasora for the moment as he watches Burt Putin crank up to pitch to Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, and Chris Shambliss. It was Jackson and Shambliss who did the damage to Burt back in the bottom of the second inning. When he is not getting the knuckle curve in the strike zone, and particularly when he starts bouncing that thing in front of the plate, he's going to have a long, hard night. And he has not been sharp tonight. Well, when you got a pitch that's your number one pitch, Keith, like his knuckle curveball, you've got to be able to get your number one pitch over. If you don't, you know, you're trying to beat a good ball club with your number two pitch. And you should not be able to do it. Does that happen to you like often, this. Tom? Not able to get your fastball where you want it? 
the days you go and you don't have a fastball. That's the beautiful thing. That's the art of pitching. Being able to do something when you don't have, you know, the greatest stuff in the world. Herman Munson takes high. That's a high knuckle curveball. And he's got to get that pitch, establish that pitch, and get it over if he's going to be effective, I believe. The Dodger fan is quiet for the moment. Sosa was up in the second. That graphic and index to the consistency of Thurman Munson. Shot to left. He'll base hit. Baker cuts it off. And hurries it back in to hold Thurman Munson at first base. And I think that illustrates, you know, that's the high fastball. Putin's second pitch, and Munson, of course, just laced it left field for a base hit. So Thurman now has eight hits in the series, even as Steve Garvey does. The two buying hit to hit. Reggie Jackson. Long drive right field. Goodbye. Goodbye. A big, big World Series for Reggie Jackson, despite all the palaver about his discontent with Billy Martin as he comes up with his third home run of the series. Quickly, the Yankees go ahead. Tom Seaver hit the nail on the head in the very early going with his talk about Bird Hoop and his inability to get that knuckleball curve over. The key so far to the ball game. So Chambliss and Jackson have homered for New York. Reggie Smith for Los Angeles. The Yankees are back on top, four to three. Nobody out. Chambliss at the plate. Nettles on deck. Vanilla to follow. Sosa in the Dodger bullpen. Now this is obviously a stall move for Thomas Sorda. He'll give a little hand signal out to Davy Lopes at second base, tell him to come in to talk to his pitcher, give the pitcher in the bullpen a little bit more time. We'll see it. This is a fastball. They're trying to pitch hard stuff in on Jackson. That's right in his wheelhouse. He just spins on that ball and hits it to a short porch here in Yankee Stadium. Strike one to Shambles. That ball went out of here at about 320 feet, maybe 25. Didn't have a whole lot of lift on it, but sure did have a lot of velocity. One ball and one strike. We're sort of moving around. There's Elias. Second time he's been up. One more crunch and he might be in here. Two and one. Here he comes right now. I didn't think it'd be much longer. Here was Tommy Lasorda. Whether to take him out or just talk to Bert Hooten, I'm not sure. And Bert doesn't meantime, look too happy on the mound. In the meantime, Tom, almost unnoticed, Reggie Jackson has seven out of 18 on the series. And he's now tied with Dusty Baker and Steve Yeager at five RBIs for the series. So Reggie's having a big series. As the conversation goes on the mound, let's quickly go to the record book with Jerry Klein here. In six-game series, Babe Ruth, Ted Kuzuski. And now Reggie Smith and Reggie Jackson have hit three home runs in a six-game series. Should add that Reggie Smith has five ribbies on the series, so it's a four-way tie. John McSherry, Tom Lasorda engaging in conversation. Reggie Jackson <laughs> sending <laughs> greetings, and we'll charge you for it, Reggie. No commercials on this show. Don't blame you a bit, Reg. Yeah, that's one of the few times I've seen him smile in the last seven days. <laughs> Usually frowns over there. They're cleaning up the uh, outfield as some stuff has come on and Elias Sosa now will be coming on and apparently is going to replace Bert Putin. Time is out. There's a story on the pitchers in tonight's ball game and that's a book on Bert Hooten because he's gone after three innings plus total of four runs three earned on three hits. He walked one and he's gone. Mike Torres across the way in the bullpen now with a one run lead and some of the burden of the evening has now shifted off not only to the relief man for the Dodgers but to the rest of the Yankee pitching staff because they have an edge. And Reggie Jackson hitting one of the two home runs struck off Bert Hooten, the first by Chris Chambliss for two runs and then Jackson with a two run shot. 
vacillation of moods, the story of Reggie Jackson all year long, the principal actor in the Yankees Daily Soap Opera. Count is two and one on Chris Shemless as Sosa comes in, and he misses high and away with a fastball to make it three and one. Bottom of the fourth inning, with nobody out. High fly ball, that's hit to the left side. Billy Russell going over, and... Oh, no! Oh, no! You could smell trouble on that one. You could smell it because Baker was coming in cautiously, thinking Russell had it well in hand, and suddenly Russell realized he didn't have it well in hand at all. Watch this. Well, that looks like a lack of communication. Bill went a long way out there. Of course, Dusty had to come a long way playing, you know, this huge Yankee Stadium outfield. But there's no excuse for that when you're a championship team. That's the I got it, you take it kind of play. So Chandler has a double, and he is 7 for 22 on the series. This is where Alphonse and Gaston broke in, wasn't it? Here's the pitch now to Nettles. Low it away. Nobody out. Chambliss at second base. Two runs are in. The Yankees are leading four to three. And there's a lot of people standing in the Dodger bullpen, but at the moment, nobody's throwing. Soso bringing a good hard fastball and a good hard slider. Keep in mind that Nettles is a dead fastball hitter, too. His job is going to get to be get the runner at second. Canvas over to third. It's like another run, make it five to three. Balloon loose on the field. Dick Hauser tracks it. Bobby Cox coaching that first base and Dick over at third. Line score in the game at this point. Yankees trying to break it open. Here in the bottom of the fourth inning. They lead three games to two. Outside. Two balls, no strikes. Get on the ground, the lopes at second. Throws out Nettles. Campus goes to third. That well, is the first out of the inning. He did his job. He moved him over. With one out, you've got the runner on third. Now it's Pinella's task. There's really almost no way for Sosa to keep Nettles from getting that guy over there other than popping it up. Drake is a dead fastball hitter, a dead pull hitter. Runner on second base. All he's got to do is pull the ball on the ground like that. It's an easy guy over to third base. He did exactly that, Howard. Did his job. Now all he needs is a sacrifice fly for Pinella. Yankees will be up five to three. Two-run lead in this game for the team that has the edge of the series is a big lead. With arrested Sparky Lyle ready and snorting to come. And it's fouled off. Here's Doug Rowell. A low ball pitcher who had a brief life last Saturday against the Yankees. They belted him early, got him out early. Roden came on to do a great job, but Ron Guidry was even better. Strike one pitch to Lou Vanilla. One out, Chambliss at third. Fly ball will produce it. Inside, ball one. Sosa throws hard, 92 miles an hour. There's the man at third. The infield is up, obviously, with the man at third. The outfield straight away. Reggie Smith not too deep in right. High drive, left field, Baker back. He has room. Chambliss tags. No play. Chris Holmes sacrificed by Pinella. Yankees lead by three. So even as Nettles did his job, Pinella did his. Those weren't boos either. They're yelling Lou. They're happy for Lou. Sacrifice fly drives in the fifth run for the Yankees. Three runs in this inning. That, of course, is exactly what happens when you do your job in moving the runner over. 
Better now. Lucky Dent. Yankee shortstop. He checks and they, they get an appeal at first base. Nestor Shylock says no, didn't go through. So it's. Well, plate umpire called it. Why is Yeager begging to uh, Shylock? He's used to umpiring back there yeah. a little bit himself, I think. Hey, he's really throwing that ball, so 93 miles per hour. Bucky Ticky, in Tom's terms, reading Christy Madison. In the yeah. vernacular of the modern day player, he's bringing it to home plate, Howard. Three and one the count on Bucky Dead now. Yankees 5 3. There's a strike. Wonder who Reggie's talking to, Tom. Maybe he's making a plane reservation. He thinks the Yankees have got it wrapped up. Dip fouls it sharply down the left side. The ball boy makes a good play and folks over there trying to talk him out of the ball. That's, Count is three and two. That's interesting, Tom. Anybody on the Reds ever talking on the phone? Any player during the game? Maybe he's ordering sand. Might be ordering dinner, you never know. Dinner reservations for 300. Here's the pitch inside the lucky dip, and he walks. He might be talking to one of those Yankee scouts in the stands who sends down the instructions, where to play, what the guy is throwing, and all the rest. By the way, that was laughed at by a lot of teams, Tommy. But now your own team has come to Gene Michael was telling us the other day, remember? The Reds have come to Gene to talk to him about exactly what the Yankees do. Teams are beginning to get very interested. Clay King is the guy doing it here in this in the series, along with Cedric Tallis. Bertie Tebbets. Red Adams talking to the bullpen. He's, he's talking, talking to Reggie. Reggie. <laughs> yeah, <maybe. laughs> Reggie. Think he's talking to Reggie? Don't think so. Breaking <laughs> pitch on the corner. Strike one. I got to give you another little sidelight into pitching here. Sosa, walking eighth place hitter. One of the cardinal rules of a of a pitcher, not only not walking the pitcher, you get that eighth place hitter out, especially with two outs. Torres hits it on the ground to Bill Russell. Goes it up. I'll explain that when we come back. So the inning is over, but it's a big one for the Yankees. They score three, they lead 5-3. To the top of the fifth inning we go now for the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Lions score showing you that the Yankees with three big runs in the bottom of the fourth lead the Dodgers 5-3 and trying to slam the door on them is big right-hander Mike Torres and he'll be pitching to the top of the order. Davey Lopes, Billy Russell, and Reggie Smith. And what was it you were going to explain, Tom? We're talking about the eighth place hitter. Uh, trying to give you some of the thought processes that a pitcher should be going through on the mound. He's got two outs and nobody on. The eighth place hitter up. If you get him out, Pitcher is really concerned about the next inning as well. Now, starting the next inning, that pitcher would be facing the pitcher, which is almost like getting one out for the next inning. As a result, now, Sosa is going to come back out there. He'll be facing the top of the lineup, Mickey Rivers, instead of the pitcher where he could get an easy out next inning. David Oaks hit listen two trips tonight. Bill Russell and Reggie Smith. And he shortens up, brings Nettles charging in from third base, takes it ball one. There's no way the Yankees can feel secure, though they have to feel good about their two-run lead, because as and, Man and Martin knows that very well. Ball two. This Dodger team has shown its comeback capacity all year long, and has shown it in the World Series. Folks, looking at Preston Gomez at third as we look in the Dodger dugout. Hits the ball high in the air to left field. Lou Pinella has plenty of time. One out. Now it's Bill Russell. Bill Russell. With the bases clean in front of him. Sparky Lyle shows up for the first time tonight in the Yankee bullpen. There he is. He's been looking for work the last three days. He may be overrested. Low from Torres for ball one to Russell. Russell also hit this in two trips. Outside. 
Guitar is getting behind the head of Stump. Martin to the mound. There goes Billy Martin, too. He noticed it as well. 2-0 to Davey Lopes. Now 2-0 to Bill Russell. You know, talking about Sparky Lyle, you're talking about a real professional in the baseball game as a pitcher. And even though he hasn't been in a game, they got those complete games from Torres and Gitby and all that. There'll be games when even though he's not going to get in him, he'll get up and throw on the bullpen. He might throw for two winnings down there if he knows that he needs the work. They won't call from the bullpen. Sparky knows what he has to do to keep himself ready, even if the Yankees are hit 10 to nothing during the season. He'll get up sometimes and throw in the bullpen. It is now 3 nothing and a Frisbee on the field. Tara's getting himself into trouble, and Reggie Smith up next. Ball four. Yep. Here comes the big man. Well, we talked it about it. We talked about it in the top of the third inning. We're talking about momentum swinging back and forth. The Yankees took it, and it looks like the Dodgers took it back when Smith hit the home run, and now it looks like the Yankees have taken it back. They get one or two of those leadoff hitters for the Dodgers on and bring this power up. They've got a chance. Could be two. There's one at second over the first easy double play. Not this time. A 6-4-3 double play. The Dodgers are gone after four and a half. Yankees five, Dodgers three. Reggie Jackson in the Yankee dugout as the top of the order. Comes to the plate, Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson. Reggie would be the fourth hitter. Yankees five, Dodgers three, bottom of the fifth inning. Elias Sosa. Hope can't get it. Rivers drills it to right center. Rick Mundy holds it at first base. So Rivers is on for the first time in the game. Now Sosa has a couple of worries. Randolph, who can hit and run for you, with Rivers the speedster and Rivers who can steal. Meantime, Tommy, Reggie Smith did exactly what you said they shouldn't do. Try and pull the outside pitch. Thus the double play, right? You can't try and tie it up on one pitch. You know, you're going to hit your home runs. If you hit 30-some-odd home runs a year, you're going to hit them. You're going to get your pitches to hit them. But it's tough to manufacture them. Sosa goes to first. Dodgers think that Billy Martin might send him, and that's exactly the routine. When he goes, he goes because Billy Martin wants him to. Randolph back in. Rao is up in the Dodger bullpen again. Rivers a short lead, not going. Randolph shortens to bunt, takes a strike. Ron Say hopping in from third, Rao warming in the pen. Pressure's on Steve Yeager here as well. If they do send Rivers, you got to be quick. Of course, Yeager with a magnificent arm, one of the better defensive catchers in baseball. Say short at third. Rivers short lead at first. Not going. Bunt down. Yeager out in a hurry. Goes to second. They get him. He threw out a fast man at second base. He That's really a fine did. play by Yeager. Not only is he an outstanding defensive catcher, he is one of the tough-nosed characters in baseball today. This takes us back to the very first game of the World Series when we saw Jerry Grody make consecutive plays of that type. Dodgers have two of the finest catchers, defensive catchers in baseball. If you look at that guy throwing down to second base, he's got to throw out Mickey Rivers. Ball sailed on him just a little bit. Two-run lead, Martin elected to bunt with Rivers, his speedster on base. Do you call that conservative play or venturesome That's play? That's very play? conservative, Howard. Exactly Your point is well point. taken. There are a lot of things you can do there. You can try and steal, you can try and hit and run. The most conservative play would be to bunt. Thurman Munson, single and scored a run in two trips. The umpire, John McSherry, will put a new ball in play. One out, one on. Bottom of the fifth inning, the Yankees on top, five to three. 
Elias Sosa came in in the fourth inning. Bert Hooten with three innings plus four runs. Three earned charges against him. Randolph himself is beast of the damaged knee, which he was protective about, a thing of the past. Pitch is outside. As Jaeger saw Munson slide up the bat handle with one out, as if they might be thinking about moving Randolph to second. But Munson, so steady with men on base, so tough. I think that's a drag move. He's faking the bunt, but he sees Say way back at third base. Yeah, he's way back he was there. thinking drag bunt. He's going to take a shot at that hole on the right side. They might try something. They might try hit and run. 2 0 now would be a good count to do it. There's the big hole between Garvey and Lopes. And of course, Munson can go to right field as well as anybody in baseball. And he's ahead in the count now. There's a lot of things offensively that a team can do here. Sosa knows it, too. <laughs> Trying to keep him close to the bag. Jackson, of course, is on deck. Dig the fourth man. Come to the plate of this inning. If Thurman does something here. One out. Randolph at first. Once it hits it to center field. Rick Monday comes and flags it down. Throws quickly back in. And Randolph retreats to first base. Two out. I noticed when Rick Mundy started in center field, it looked like the turf kicked up under his foot. He almost slipped. Well, they had quite a bit of rain here the other day. A lot of rain at home. There's a lot of water on the ground. And you saw Pinella slip earlier as well. Reggie Jackson, who has walked and homered. Scored twice, knocked in two. Three home runs in the series so far. Sosa breaks the tension by throwing over to hold Randolph close again. Two out now. Hard shot right field. It's gone. Oh, what a World Series for Richie Jackson. First pitch right in his wheelhouse, as Don Siegel would say. Richie Jackson now well on his way to becoming the most valuable player in the 1977 World Series if the Yankees go on to win. Well, they say the cream comes to the top and George Steinbrenner played that man $3 million, $2.9 million. He got two home runs in this game. It looks like that investment is paying off. Fastball right down the chute. Just turns, just spins on it. He's got a short porch in right field. And a big, strong man, Reggie Smith, looks like he knew it, too. The Yankees go ahead 7-3. to three. Something, something I'll always remember. That ball just got in. At that point, the outfield fence is at its highest. It's nine feet high. Reggie Jackson, the other day, in his room with me, on his way to meeting Billy Martin for an apparent rapprochement. Look at Reggie. He had to eat crow. He knew it. He didn't want to do it, but he did it. And he'll be back next year, says George Steinbrenner. And Martin is already assured of being back next year. Victory can bring harmony. Doug Rao gets the call. And he'll be coming in from the Dodger bullpen as Reggie Jackson goes for successive home runs. And the Yankees now lead 7-3. to three. And the Dodgers are in trouble. Time is out as the new pitcher, Doug Rao, comes on. And we'll be back with more in a moment. The Dodger pitcher, the third of the night, Doug Rao. His seasonal record reflected there. It was in the start in Los Angeles where he was shelled by the Yankees when he got a surprise start for the Dodgers. And he didn't last very long as Reggie Jackson, the fourth home run in one series, ties a World Series record. You can find almost any kind of record if you want to go deep enough into the World <laughs> Series record book. 
Ralph pitched one inning as he delivers now to Chris Chambliss in Los Angeles. He was hit four hits, three runs, and all three were earned. Two balls and no strikes now to Chris Chambliss with two out and Greg Nettles on deck. Seven to three, Yankee lead. On the corner, strike one. Reggie now has a total of seven RBIs in the World Series. To Garvey. Steve will do it himself, and the inning is over. But so much damage was done to the Los Angeles Dodgers after five innings of play. Seven to three in New York. Back with more after this word from our local station. The scene just a few moments ago as Reggie Jackson went to his defensive position in right field. You might call it aggrandizement of an athlete. How sweet it all is, especially for that man with all the rebuffs this year. All of the problems with media people, the problems with his manager. How sweet it is. For the Los Angeles Dodgers now, down by four big runs against Mike Torres. Ron Say, Steve Garvey, and Dusty Baker. And if you think this team will quit, you're mistaken. It's ball one. It is not, however, the ballpark to hit it out very often at the left side unless you can pull it sharply. It is so big at 387 left, going over to 430 left center and 417 in center. Ron Say with a bat on his shoulder, looking at Mike Torres, go to three and go. Torres has been behind a lot of hitters. Don Seaver's constant warning. Quickly behind three and oh on Say. There's a strike and Sparky Lyle is up in the Yankee bullpen. Well, if he starts getting behind here, this is exactly what the Dodgers need. There's Sparky Lyle. They don't need home runs. They need walks, they need singles, they need doubles. They've got to play their game to the opposite field. They've got to start getting away from the home run. They don't need the home run. Strikes out, Ron Say. That's after falling behind him 3-0, and he comes back and strikes out. The Dodgers need base runners. You get behind by this much, you're down four runs, you've got four innings to go. You've got to take the ball to the other field. Just take a single. Peck away. Get two runs here, get two runs there. Batter now is Steve Garvey. Triple and a fly ball to center. If both well. Tries to drag it down the third base side with Greg Nettles deep and fouled it away. The Yankees trying to win their 21st World Championship in the history of the ball club. What a history in this ball club. No pitch as Garvey steps up. Mike flips it up to the plate anyway. Look at Thurman. He said it was a good pitch. It's on the umpire. It was a strike. You see Put him? that in your repertoire next year, Mike. <laughs> He never soul. loses his sense of humor. High fly ball to right center. Playable. Jackson coming over. Reggie makes the catch. Two out. Now it is Dusty Baker. Seven to three in the top of the six. Oh, he had a little hot sauce on that one. <laughs> That's known as dead red. High fly ball left. Vanilla goes back to the track and run. Torres gets the Dodgers in order in the top of the sixth inning. The Yankees lead 7 to 3. There's the bus. history everywhere, aren't they? Yep, George Herman Babe Ruth. One of six players to have hit four home runs in a World Series. And that bust, of course, out in center field where the Yankee bullpen is. There are the six players. The Babe, the Iron Horse, Luke Garrett, the Duke of Flatbush, Duke Snyder, Hank Bauer, to that great Yankee career, Gene Tennis, and now Reggie Jackson. Frank Nettle. Takes a strike, Doug Rao. Then it'll be Lou Vanella and Bucky Dent for New York. The pitcher spot 
the fourth hitter. No reason not to think Mike Torres won't be there. Nettle swings and misses on a breaking pitch and quickly rounds in front. Two strikes. Dodger pin for the moment. Quiet. Pitch outside. This figures to be Rouse last inning if he gets through it because he's up at that next inning. It should have up somebody. Nettles fouls it into the Yankee dugout. Rouse job at this point, Keith. The entire Dodger bullpen is just a hole in. They've got the Dodgers have nine outs to get back in the ball game. They just can't give any give away any more runs. Doug's job and the entire bullpen just to hold him right there. Well, he strikes out Nettles for the first time of the inning. He's throwing harder and looks better now than he did in the start. He really does. Sweet Lou, Lou Pinella. The unnoticed Yankee who came through with the sacrifice fly at a very important time in the ball game for the Yankees. Did his job. He's made another good, he's made a fine throw, catching Yeager at second when the Dodgers had a rally buddy. How's that in the seats? The Bear, Big Mike, out of Topeka, Kansas, signed for a mere $20,000, and he's bumped around all over Major League Baseball. He is still destined to be a free agent the day after the season's over. Re-entry draft, November 4. But Gabe Paul and he are getting close. Hi. Well, if you remember, Keith, what George Steinbrenner said in the pregame in it. A little pain now showing on Tom Lasorda's face. That's Pinellas deep to deep to center field. But Rick Monday getting a good break on the ball. And you have good visibility at this ballpark. You have two out. Pinella, an excellent low ball hitter. He conked a low ball for that sacrifice fly earlier on. Better now, Bucky Dent, Yankee shortstop, two out, bases clean. Pitch high and away. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. High fly, left side, Baker coming over. It's in the seats. Now you have the knuckler in the Dodger bullpen, Charlie Huff, who had an impressive outing in his only appearance in the series. He made them look helpless. When you haven't seen the dancer very often, I'll tell you, you can make a lot of people look helpless. But Reginald Martinez Jackson has had a night to remember. I think the man just loves, thrives on controversy. <laughs> Known Reggie for a long time. There's Billy. Where's a happy Billy Martin? Reggie for a long time. He was in controversy, a controversial team when he was with the Athletics. This year has been a soap opera over here with the Yankees. He comes out in a game where if they win, they go home. He gets a couple of dingers. Dent hits it toward Russell. On a bounce to Garvey to get him. So the inning is over as Rao gets him in order. Thank you very six. much. Thank you. Good to see you. Seven three. This game is still, in our view, far from over. But all year long, should the Yankees win, they've been characterized in the press as the best team money can buy. Look at the estimated and their very solid estimates of the salaries of the Yankees. Rivers at that figure. Randolph at that figure. Munson and Jackson at a similar figure. Of course, bonuses and deferred payments are excluded. Chambliss at 150. Nettles at 135. Pinella 80. Den 110. Tara's 85. He now wants a half a million. And Martin at 100,000. Rick Monday hits it on the ground for the second place. Easily Randolph. One out. Rick Monday leading off to be followed by Steve Yeager and then the pitcher spot. That's a lot of loot. Tom Siebert. You take all that loot, you add on about $32,000, which these Yankees have got a chance to win if they hold on here tonight. 
winner share in a World Series, great big Yankee Stadium contributed to that. $32,000 looks like for the winner share. That's not bad peanuts for about seven days' work, is it? Not too bad. Mike Torres pitching to Steve Yeager. The Dodger catcher screams and misses. I'll tell you one thing about Torres that I kind of like, too, considering his circumstances. I do like his timing. <laughs> well, if he can last this out. Ed Goodson on deck as a bench hitter as he misses low and away. The Yeager for one ball and one strike. Pits one before. Out. Before that one, Keith, 93 miles an hour. So Torres is still firing. Up the middle, Mike Flagler throws him out. Two down. They're looking at seven outs now. They need seven outs. They'll be world champions. And they very well know it. Every one of those guys in that field. Torres made a good play on the mound. Big guy's pretty agile out there. I don't know what Billy Martin's out there. Your attention, please. Maybe Torres Ladies hurt himself, twisted or something, turned his body. Ed Goodson now will come to the plate, a left-handed <laughs> swinger. He was in the on-deck circle in one of the games in Los Angeles, but I don't believe he actually came to the plate. I think obviously that's what Billy came out for, talking about how to pitch to Goodson. This is a dead first ball, fastball hitter. That's from my little notebook of. 11 years of requiring hitter's strengths and weaknesses. Was Goodson smiling or grimacing? There's a strike. With the appearance of Goodson at the plate, though, every one of the Dodgers now will have appeared in this World Series. Fouled off. Torres is trying to duplicate his performance of last week. He allowed three runs on the Baker home run in the third. They never scored on him after that. He allowed the third run tonight in the third. Well, one, one and two. And a reminder that only one Dodger run has been earned. The two in the first unearned. Look him up. Mike Torres now has retired seven in order. And the score continues after six and a half, seven, three, the Yankees. Knuckleballer Charlie Huff is now on the mound, the fourth Los Angeles pitcher. And he throws a real dancer, let me tell you. When you can get it over, he's almost impossible. Let's go back to an earlier piece of videotape as Charlie talks about his pitch. Knuckleball, I think, is uh, the weirdest pitch in baseball and possibly the most misunderstood. Most people think that it's thrown with the knuckles, and I don't know of anybody, including myself, that throws it that way. We all throw it with the fingernails, maybe not necessarily in the same spot on the ball, but we all try and throw it with the fingernails and push the ball out so it has little or no rotation on the ball. Unlike a fastball, which spins straight back, or a curveball, which spins forward or down, a knuckleball has no true trajectory. And therefore, the wind currents in the stadium sometimes make the ball bob around like a wiffle ball, and it might break two or three different times on the way to the plate. Because of these unpredictable breaks that the knuckleball has, an oversized catcher's mitt has been developed, which is similar to a first baseman's glove, which enables the catcher to catch the ball one-handed. Even though the knuckleball has all this movement, it doesn't put very much strain on my arm, and it enables me to pitch almost every day. And it drives hitters up the wall. Lou Pinella is one of those with a kind of stroke that quite possibly could handle it. But I doubt very much if the big guy at the plate right now is going to have much luck with it. But you never know. Mike Torres, the Yankee pitcher. <laughs> he got a piece of it. I don't I don't think hitting that knuckleball is a main thing on his mind. He's thinking about six more out. He's yes, got sir. two World Series wins and a championship for his team the New York Yankees that's outside the Yankees his fifth team he previously played at Oakland at Baltimore at Montreal at St. Louis swing and a miss one and two taking his hacks up there isn't he yeah <laughs> hacking at it <laughs> oh I, I would I, I'll bet you he jumps eight feet in the air if he goes on and wins this ball game. Strikes out. Hack at it. Hack at it. You might hit it. You never know. 
New York City. That's got to be the George Washington Bridge, isn't it? Stadium it's in not, behind it. got a scoop. Is that it? <laughs> it's not, well, it's we not got more than one bridge around here. We got the Triborough and the White Road, the George Washington, and, and the Bronx, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Hammond, and, 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 and the Brooklyn, guys. and the Queensboro. Thank you, River. End of geography. End of our geography <laughs> lesson for today. Steve Yeager, of course, is long that the big Arizona. pillow that he has, uh, trying to handle Charlie Huff's knuckleball. Yeager will box it around quite a bit. It's the size of that glove. Outside. There it is. Great big old thing. Pull to right, base hit for Rivers. Going to the corner, Mickey will hold on. As the throw comes in from Reggie Smith in a hurry. That's just respect for the man's arm in right field because Mickey Rivers can run with anybody in the American League. The ball got down to the corner awfully quickly. Who would guess that he would take a chance and get the second base with one out on the board. Bottom of the seventh inning, Willie Randolph is at the plate with one out and Rivers at first. Say shortens up some at third. To the edge of the grass. The knuckler is in for a strike. Yeager boxes it around and keeps it in front of him. Garvey and Rivers. They go to first. Crowd kind of quiet now. Their ball club leading seven to three. Randolph chops at it, fouls it off. Has a look at Dick Hauser. Now comes back with a two-strike count. Remember how we talked in the opening game about nerves and how you get butterflies in the opening game in the first couple of innings? It's that way at the end of the World Series, it if this sure is indeed is. the end. It has to be. There's no other way. The Yankees have to be thinking ahead to those final six outs. Dodgers will have the top of the order coming up at the top of the eighth inning. Foul at the plate. And the count holds at one and two on Willie Randolph. With one out at Rivers at first. 21 World Championship. My goodness. You can see the Torres has started and gone all the way for New York. Tom Lasorda working through the ranks of this pitching core. With Huff being the fourth. And Lance Robson is up in the bullpen right now for Los Angeles. Two and two to Willie Randolph. There's the young left-hander for the Dodgers, Lance Robson. If he's called, it'll be his second appearance in the series. Fouled off, and that bit Steve. The right shoulder. See, Charlie, you can see that time he was sinking his fingers. Fingernails into the ball. Rivers off. Two, he's going on two and two. It goes to say. Ronnie looks at second, no play, throws out Randolph. Munson up. Even though they're four ahead, this is a big situation. A home run with the bases loaded can overtake a four run lead. The fifth run. Is a very precious insurance type of run. So Thurman and the Yankees want to hit now. Should Thurman jerk one here, he's right back in the MVP hunt, too. You really think so? Well, if the Dodgers should make a run, and his particular effort has some meaning. 
ballots are probably being cast right about this time. That's foul, and I think it's fouled off Thurman. Or <laughs> he just fell down trying to hit that dancer coming up there. He's really a remarkable competitor, though, Keith. Let's look at him again. Right down. Yeah, it bit him. Right off that left foot. You can scratch him and claw him and bloody him up, but he'll be forever unbowed because this is old scrap iron. Gives more than you'd ever think he had to give. Or his lucky half to the ballpark today. Funny looking thing, but apparently it's something working. Balloons are floating down onto the field of play. Time will be called. Might be taking those to the Yankee clubhouse, saving them for a celebration. They might be having one here. Yeah, they might just have a little tooth down there. Yeah, tonight, they huh? might have a little champagne, a little bubbly flowing in that clubhouse. Swing and a miss. Two strikes. If the series ends tonight, we will obviously visit with the victors. Bill White will be visiting. They have not won yet. That pitch is high. You know, Steve Yeager started reaching up, and then as the ball got to the plate, he just kept going down, and finally to one knee to chase it down. It's one and two to Thurman Munson with two out, and Mickey Rivers at second base. Ball gets away from Steve, throws to first to get Munson, and the inning is over. So Charlie Huff comes in, does his job, gets the Yankees, Go now to the top of the eighth. Back with more after this word from our local station. Want to see what Charlie Huff's knuckler can do to you? Watch this. Watch the dance up there. Take a good hack at it. Where it is, sometimes it isn't anymore. Sometimes it leaves that place. Oh, poor Steve. He got a piece of it. <laughs> full Thurman. It's full Steve. Full the umpire. All right. It worked for an out anyway. Coverage of the 1977 World Series being brought to you by Chevrolet. See what's new today at your Chevrolet dealer. And by Gillette, makers of right guard double protection. Don't get dressed without it. Top of the eighth inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers. The top of the order. Davey Lopes, Billy Russell, Reggie Smith, Ron Say, the fourth man if somebody should get on. Mike Torres working on a five hitter. He's allowed three runs, two unearned. Yankees lead seven to three. And Torres throws a bullet in the strike zone. Now yeah, the Dodge orders are going to be take a strike. Torres has got to throw strikes. That's going to be his number one purpose right now on the mound. Get up the middle by Lopes. Base hit. Well, that's the beginning of a restive stir in the crowd. And because Sparky they've, Lyle. Right? <laughs> they've seen this Dodgers team fight Short back snap. before. Bill Russell. Russell at the plate now. He is hitless in two trips. He's walked once. Circumstance like this takes the wings off the feet of Davy Lopes, though. Unless Russell can hit behind him. Reggie Smith to the on deck circle. Pitch to Russell. Strike. Ball outside. One and one. Close. Very close. Top of the eighth inning. Game number six. He went around. Good high fastball to Russell. Watch the bat hit come through the strike zone. See it? That's a strike. Good call. One and two to Bill Russell. Two and two. The Dodgers are not out of this yet. They got their leadoff hitter on, Davey Lopes. 
And this kid here, Bill Russell, these two guys make this offense roll. And you've got Smith, Say, and Garvey coming up. Billy Martin looking on. The Dodgers are nowhere out of this. Nowhere are they out of this yet. Low and outside, it's three and two. Nobody out. Lopes on first. Full count on Russell. Smith on deck. He walks him. You might see a visit from Billy Martin after this. Very quickly. Hits it to right. Reggie Jackson. Reaches up, flags it down. That's one. And here is the other Reggie. He shouldn't really be characterized that way. Not skill of the series he has had thus far. He has three home runs in this World Series. Two here in New York. Inside. Both hit in just about the same place. Except I think the one, the first visit here, the second game was longer. Well, they were both monsters, Keith. The home runs that he's hit here. On the nose. He's a big, strong man. He can really get it out there. And you saw a shot of Lasson in the dugout, exhorting his team on till it's over. And unless it's over, he won't quit. 1-1 one, one pitch. Inside. 2-1. and one. Lopes on first. One out. Well, sort of deserves a lot of credit. He had a meeting the other day with the Dodgers were down 3-1. to one. Call his men in, said he was very proud of them, each and every one of them, and no matter what happened, they've all had a great season. Fouled out of play. I tell you, it's fun to have a guy like Tom Lasorda in uh, baseball. He's a cheerleader. That last pitch, by the way, Keith, 95 miles per hour. So here in the late going, Taurus is still firing. He's still thrown only about probably 92, 93 pitches. He had 86 at the start of this inning. There's no reason really to be tired. To Shandler, the second and one. That's the first double play. That was a great turn by Chris Chambers. It was. A fine fielding effort by Chambers at first base. And so the Dodgers get the leadoff man on, but can't move him around. The you double play again. Great double play turned by Chambliss. One step and a fine throw to second base. Here it is, another view of it. Good throw to second base right on the inside part of the bag. A perfect throw, and Dent turns it over. Not even close. Chambliss got back to the bag. That's a great double play. Two outs for the Yankees. They need three more. They'll be world champions. 1977, and there's their man leading off this inning against Charlie off Reggie Jackson for nine runs in the series. Toughest double play in baseball, and they made it when they had to. Now listen to the ovation for Reggie Jackson as he comes up to the plate. Reggie Jackson has seen two pitches in the strike zone tonight, two, and he's hit them both in the seat. Company to be in. 
But Reggie, the candy bar was not named after the babe. Look at it again. Look at turn on this pitch. Knuckleball or no knuckleball. It was what Reggie wanted. He got great extension out of his arms. Look at him. Stand there and look at it. He knew it was oh. gone. A monstrous blow. High above the 417 foot mark. Deep into the empty area without spectators. Measure it 450 to 475. There's a sense of release in that man now. Fulfillment is written in his face. What we just told you, only one other man had done it. Babe Ruth did it twice. There's the Babe. Out in that area, right next to the Yankee bullpen. And now the noise subsides some, and Chris Shemp stands at the plate. And it's two balls and no strikes. The fire destroyed Reggie's home in Oakland. He lost all of his trophies, with MVP, World Series MVP, the seven all-star rings, the World Series ring. But he's going to have some trophies, I think, when this night's over. As Shambliss grounds, Davy Lopes in second base for the first time. We can announce it. Sports Magazine's MVP for the 1977 <laughs> World Series, Reggie Jackson. And while they probably didn't need that run, time will tell on that, it nonetheless is still another important run to have in the bank. Nettles at the plate, gets it foul. You know what? I'm going to make him give me the car. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need it. Reggie, of course, a close friend of Keith Jackson's. They've worked together on ABC's Super Star Show. Stupid. <laughs> well, there were days of that. No, too. no pun intended. <laughs> one and one to Greg Nettle. Crowd roaring his name. Roaring for the Yankees. Eight to three as Nettle swings and misses on an upgrade. There's another man sitting close to us. His name is George Steinbrenner. For him, equal fulfillment. He's the man who insisted on getting Reggie Jackson. Nettles pulls away. Knuckler gets the corner. Greg strikes out. And here comes Lou Fidella. Might sound like a sound chorus of booze to you at home, but it is not. It is for Lou. Side. Ball one. Outside, ball two. The Yankees need only three more outs, and they will have won in the history of this club 21st World Series. Vanilla fouls it off. And unless the Dodgers can stage a dramatic comeback in the top of the ninth inning, they will have won it with authority. The stadium is absolutely alive. People on their feet, it's just like electricity. All the history of this ballpark. They sense another world championship. And I can't blame them. They know they're just three outs away from it. Tom Lasorda deserves a lot of credit for everything the Dodgers have done this year. A long season starts back in February, spring training. 162 games. Vanella hits it in the air to the right side. Garvey goes over. Steve makes the catch and foul ground, and the inning is over. But the Yankees get one more run at the bottom of the eighth inning on Reggie Jackson's third successive home run, and going to the top of the ninth, they lead eight to three. As Reggie Jackson took the field here at Yankee Stadium, there was a standing ovation. And I might tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the vote among the writers and broadcasters involved in the most valuable player award was unanimous. Look at Reggie Jackson. The whole long season. An air altercation in the dugout with his manager, Billy Martin, when Martin precipitously removed him from the game. Later substitutions of him. And then... 
swinging those mock swings and saying, I can only answer one way. That's with my back. I can come through with my back. And he has done just that. Reggie Maybe. Jackson won the award back in 1973 with the Oakland Raiders. Second Our time Oakland around Aiden. for Reggie. What a spectacular performance. And if they go on to win it, as it seems they will, maybe it's true that this was the best team money could buy, but victory hasn't come easy. The Yankees live the soap opera on the precipice of peril. Ron Say up now for the top of the ninth inning to lead off with Steve Garvey, Dusty Baker, and then Rick Mundy if anybody should get aboard. Mike Torres trying to go the distance for the second time in this World Series. Keith, they had to take over as you look at that graphic. Not one, but two teams, the Red Sox and the Birds. Say fouls it off. They did that in the very late going, winning in the American League East by two and a half games over both teams. They appeared defeated by Kansas City, but they rallied from a two to one deficit to a three to two games victory, and they did it in the final inning of the final game. So there's something inside of this team Regardless of money, you don't come through this way on money alone. Torres misses to say, and it's one and two. Though I would still say, I will express now what I had in my mind at the beginning <laughs> that this could well have been the series, say fouls it off, of the almighty dollar versus the big dog who in the sky. <laughs> Well, I can feel for both these teams, Keith. I mean, I've been on a winning side, 1969. I've been on a losing side in 1973. There's strike three. That's one out. Say strikes out. Two outs to go. Torres, two outs away from a world championship. I've been on both sides. We beat the Baltimore Orioles as the New York Met in 1969. 1973, defeated by the Oakland Athletics. Reggie Jackson in right field. I lost game number six, and they came back to beat us in game number seven. Been in a winning team and a losing team, and there is a big span of emotions on that field and in both dugouts right now. Ground ball to Bucky Dent. Dent's throw, a little bit lame as he slipped, trying to get the throw away, and couldn't get much on it, and Garvey legs it out. Garvey did a good job hustling to first base. He's got every reason to fold up and just take a routine out. He did a good job getting to first, and even though Dent slipped, he almost nipped him, but it was Garvey's hustle that allowed him to just beat the throw to first. Which traces back to what you were saying, the job the Dodgers have done all year long. The fight, the spirit in this club, epitomizing the doughty little one-time southpaw Tom Lasorda, their manager. Maybe the Baker. most spirited in the league. Gets it to left. Base hit. They don't quit easy. Garvey at second. Holds on. Back-to-back -back singles now by Garvey and Baker. Garvey, to me, is also one of those people where a multi-year contract perhaps is not considered a risk at all, but rather an investment in a quality man. An investment in probably a show of confidence, Keith especially with his knee the way it is. If you look at Rick Mundy, and there's the ace in the hole for the Yankees, Sparky Lyle. You need me, I'm right here, he says. Torres to Mundy, strike one. One out, Garvey at second, Baker at first. Monday misses on the drag effort, and it's two strikes on Rick. The men in blue now have come down in assuming positions. They're going to try to save the field when this is over. 
Monday beats a foul at the plate. Remember a year ago, Howard, when Chambliss plumped it in the seats to win the American League pennant for the Yankees, how they came roaring down on the field. Crowd went crazy. Chambliss couldn't touch the bases. Some wondered if he had to. The answer technically was no. When interference by the crowd prevents it, the ball has been struck out of the park. No, you don't have to touch all the bases. Two strike pitch to Rick Monday. Foul back here. It's closest we've had. Don't worry, guys. I still got you covered. <laughs> Last time the New York Yankees won a World Series was 1962 when they beat the Giants four games to three. And that one ended with a line smash that was corralled by Mr. Bobby Richards. A not to be forgotten moment as the Giants were threatened. I'm even young enough to remember that off the bat of Willie McCovey. That's correct. He had a heck of a year himself. Low to Rick Monday. A word about Billy Mott, the beleaguered little pepper pot, all year long. A man who made his share of mistakes and more, as he would tell you. But a man who somehow, with all of the controversy, motivates ball players. That one luck. Two and two. So the Dodgers are making Mike Torres work here in the top of the ninth inning. And Chris Chambliss now comes to the mound. May well have been sent there by Billy Martin as Sparky Lyle throws hard in the Yankee bullpen. Chris exhorting Mike, bear down, settle down, get him out, go all the way, big guy. You've earned the privilege. The big bull, Mike Torres. High fly ball, deep to right. Jackson goes back to the track, to the wall, and makes the catch. Oh, just fell. Kirby goes to third. Hearts were beating in this stadium as they watched the flight of that ball. As they watched the outfielder, as Red Bobby used to teach, they would have known Reggie had it under control. But it was so close. Now, a man ran out, a fan ran out to hug Reggie Jackson. Reggie personally has caught some back into the stands. Still another doing the same thing. Reggie shakes his hand. You hear the public address announce. I'm not sure that I would want to be shaking hands with some idiot that comes running out <laughs> on the field in the course of the game. In the first place, how do you know how he's going to behave when he gets there? You're just telling it like it is, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> Nick Davalio comes up. Nick Davalio, who was such a big man in that big win for the Dodgers in Philadelphia. One of the venerable veterans of this game of baseball who had the fortune smile on him uh, late this summer when he was called back from the Mexican League and was able to come back to the Major League one more time and to participate in the World Series. With two out and two on, Davalio bunts the ball. Greg Nettles barehanded, throws to Munson, and they can't get Garvey at the plate. And Davalio legs it out, and Dusty Baker doing exactly third. what Tom Seaver said the Dodgers had to do once they fell behind: get the singles, get the men on base. Then, and he did that. You'll remember in the final inning of the third game against Philadelphia. Nettles makes a smart play, the only play possible. He couldn't get down the year at first, but he couldn't get the runner at home up. It is now 8-4 to four in this ball game as Davalio gets a butt single hitting for Yaker. And now it's going to be Lee Lacey. Billy's leaving them in, too. Patting him on the back, giving him a vote of confidence. And you saw earlier a glimpse of the fans already. Their legs over the outfield fence. And they're throwing firecrackers out into right field. Reggie Jackson now thinking seriously about leaving, and he will, and I don't blame him. Jackson it. coming in. The home fans chasing the most valuable player of their team off the field. He's coming in for a helmet, what he's coming in for. He just doesn't want to take any chances. Get that rid of that soft cap. 
Give me a batting helmet. I'll go back out there. We've talked about this before. We don't want to belabor the point. Behavior like this is intolerable, unthinkable, disgraceful, and not worthy of this great city. Reggie waiting. They're taking the batting helmets, apparently, back to the locker room. They've cleaned every glove and every bat, every helmet and everything out of that dugout. <laughs> you know, Cliff Johnson, a big old Cliff, who is as big as a tree, said it is. Get on back out there and play. <laughs> now he's got his helmet, if it fits. Forgot his glasses. They <laughs> might need those, right? I imagine it's, if they come piling out of there, I don't believe that there's going to be a whole lot of tolerance exhibited, however, by the security forces because everybody has been warned beautifully that security has been quadrupled. They are not going to tolerate it. Well, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, Keith, they'll be flowing over that right and left field wall. It's going to be. Public address announcer was remonstrating with the fans. Please behave. Lee Lacey up at the plate now with one run in for the Dodgers. Two out and two on. Mike Torres trying to go all the way. There's a strike. One and one. Dusty Baker at second base. Nick Davalio at first base. One out is all they need. Any fly ball, anything. That's all they need. Do it. That's going to do it. Gonna do it. Torres, Torres gets it. it. The Yankees win. Their 21st World Series. They've traced them season long for you. The ups and downs, emotional, and on the playing field. The way they came from behind to beat the Red Sox and the Birds. The way they came from behind to beat the Royals. And now this, the ultimate fulfillment for a controversial, deeply complex and sensitive man named Reggie Jackson, who first fought with three home runs and became the most valuable player in the World Series. As you look at a relief, Billy Morton, knowing he's back next year, and Reggie will be back. And you're looking at Bill White down there in the clubhouse, ready to take over, as Commissioner Bowie Cube congratulates the winning man. The crowd pouring out. No way in the world to stop it. As the clock showed, 10.43 p.m., October 18, 1977, the New York Yankees defeat the Los Angeles Dodgers 8-4. to four. 